It's judgment time. It's February 6, 1988, NBA All-Star Weekend at Chicago Stadium, where the home crowd is going bananas for Michael Jordan's final dunk of the competition. This stylish, gliding, one-handed flush. Now the onus is on the judges. That dunk needs a near-perfect score for MJ to win this contest over fellow finalist Dominique Wilkins. Before the judges make their ruling, we need to understand what has already happened in this contest, in prior contests, and in this sparkling head-to-head -head rivalry. We gotta rewind. So Jordan needs a high score on this last dunk, at least a 49, to win this contest against Dominique Wilkins. Whatever the outcome, it'll be one more data point in a friendly, admiring rivalry that's got a decent amount of history already. Dominique went to high school in North Carolina, but broke hearts by committing to the University of Georgia in 1979. A couple years later, a fellow Carolina high schooler stayed local, accepting a scholarship at UNC. The age difference here is narrow enough that these two met once in college in February of 1982. The big story was the battle between Wilkins and his senior Tar Heel counterpart, James Worthy, but the freshman UNC guard made his presence felt. Here he is getting Neek in the air with a pretty slick pump fake. That spring, Jordan helped UNC win the NCAA tournament. Wilkins was drafted by the Utah Jazz, but became an Atlanta Hawks soon thereafter, and spent a couple years improving as a scorer for a team that still couldn't make much noise in the playoffs. In 1984, Michael joined Dominique in the pros and found himself in a comparable situation. Jordan was an instant star, but it took some time for the rest of his team to catch up, especially when Eastern stalwarts like the Pistons and Celtics were at their playoff best. While their supporting casts developed, these two built a fantastic head-to-head -head rivalry that reached a new level last season. In December of 86, Wilkins dropped 57 points in a blowout victory over MJ's Bulls. His final field goal of the night would have gotten a decent score in tonight's contest. Jordan had 41 points of his own and crammed on Tree Rollins. The two gushed over one another after the game, and in fact, during the game, exchanging the occasional great move or great steal or nice dunk. In a rematch toward the end of that season, Jordan returned the favor with a night of multiple feats. This bucket capped off a league record run of 23 straight points by himself and put Jordan over 3,000 points on the season, a feat previously unique to Wilt Chamberlain. Wilkins, though, hit this last second jumper to put Atlanta up three. Jordan had 61 points, but just missed a long range buzzer beater to tie the game. This highlights the distinction we talked about before. Jordan is the superior of these two marvelous players, but his Bulls posted a losing record and got swept in the first round of the 87 playoffs. In Jordan's three full seasons, the Bulls have won a playoff game. One game. Wilkins isn't quite Michael, but his Hawks finished last season with 57 wins and made it to the second round again. Atlanta's had more time to build around their star with younger, complimentary players like big man Kevin Willis and point guard Doc Rivers, who will play in his first All-Star game tomorrow, joining Wilkins and Hawks head coach Mike Fratello. Jordan has lacked true co-stars, cycled through head coaches, and never enjoyed real team success, but that might be changing. Chicago's not far behind Atlanta in the standings this season. The Bulls are 2-2 two two against the Hawks, a development Michael predicted. Dominique always had more help. Now Michael's got help. Jordan's got Doug Collins, his first head coach of more than one season. Charles Oakley is really coming into his own as a force of power forward. And two first-year players, Scottie Pippen and Horace Grant, look ready to take on bigger roles soon. And Jordan himself remains the league's top scorer, with Wilkins a distant second. This might finally be a winning squad. Michael's team might soon surpass Dominique's. But that's basketball. We're not here to play basketball, we're here to play dunks. Good news, this is just as much a dunking rivalry as it is a basketball rivalry. Wilkins participated in the first NBA dunk contest in 1984, alongside former ABA slamming legends like Larry Nance and contest winner Julius Irving. At the 1985 contest in Indianapolis, a rookie MJ entered the chat. He and Dominique ended up in the final together. Jordan's best dunk in that round was this cradling reverse, which got a 49. 
Wilkins bounced the ball off the floor and the backboard to reverse home a 50-pointer. Then he ended the thing with his signature two-hand windmill. Although comparing this degree of force to something as passive as a windmill feels insufficient. That thrilling 85 final demanded a rematch, but that was easier said than done. Jordan's broken foot kept him out of the contest in 86, but Wilkins had his hands full anyway because of his own teammate, 5'7 Spud Webb, who pulled off the upset with a pair of 50s in the final round. In 87, Dominique missed the contest because of general soreness. Bummer. His brother, Gerald Wilkins, wasn't bringing quite the same heat. Portland's Jerome Kersey gave Jordan a decent challenge, but MJ took it home by closing the semifinal and final rounds with basically the same dunk. He got a 50 both times. That brings us to tonight. Finally, both Wilkins and Jordan are in the contest, and they've got a tough act to follow. Earlier today, Larry Bird won his third straight three-point shootout, canning the final shot while proclaiming himself number one. Awesome. Well, more good news. MJ and Meek have stood out from the bunch tonight. Some of that is relative. The field is only seven dunkers because Cleveland's Ron Harper was a last minute injury scratch. And the only other champ here, Spud Webb, doesn't have quite the same bounce just a year or so removed from major knee surgery. Still dunking though. There have been some cool finishes from the rest of the field, like Otis Smith's high up 360 tomahawk, which got a 47 from the judges and Clyde Drexler's backhanded 360, which got a 46. But Jordan and Wilkins have headlined each of the three rounds. Jordan's very first dunk looked like an uncoiling spring. It was gorgeous, and it immediately revealed the tough job the judges have here in Chicago. Our panel of Gail Sayers, Johnny Green, Gail Goodrich, Tom Hawkins, and Randy Smith gave MJ a 47. Seems fine, but the crowd let him hear it. Legs out, and the crowd responds. And only a 47, <laughs> the crowd not real happy with that. They only got grouchier when Dominique's first dunk, this powerful reverse, got a 49. Plays out and really throws it down. That's a good pop for Wilkins. And a 49 for Dominique Wilkins to put him in first place. Jordan finished his first round with a slightly windmillier version of the same dunk and got a 47. More unrest from the rabble. The crowd has booed the 47. <laughs> and the booing continued after Wilkins' best entry of the second round, this massive one-handed windmill, got a 49. This third and final round has been Dominique's highest scoring. He got a 50 for absolutely launching to send one home off the glass. He got another 50 for this huge baseline windmill. Jordan hasn't quite kept up in the finals. He got a 50 for another soaring reverse, but his second dunk, which was fairly similar to one of his first round dunks, got a 47, just like it did the first time. Thus, with one dunk left apiece, the hometown favorite trailed by three points. If Neek earned better than a 47 on this final two-handed windmill, he'd be uncatchable. He didn't. With two hands. And the judges have awarded Dominique Wilkins a 45. That's incredible. <laughs> Could we call it a make good? Yeah, the announcers were a little suspicious of crowd influence. Hey, you don't think the crowd has some influence on the judges on that last dunk? <laughs> they certainly recall how these Chicagoans handled prior perceived slights to their local hero. These judges <laughs> are going to need the National Guard to get out of Chicago Stadium. So you wonder how the crowd factors in on the panel's judgment of MJ's final dunk right now. And how should they judge this, objectively? Dunking from far out is not new. At the very first NBA contest in 84, Dr. J put one down from just inside the free throw line. That was kind of his thing. 7-4 Ralph Sampson did the same, and so did Edgar Jones with a long running start. There have been many similar dunks since, though Jordan is clearly the vanguard. His foot was right on the line in 85, and it got him a 50. He added a little pump and leg flare in 87 and got another 50. In fact, he did that again tonight, and these judges also gave it a 50. Which brings us to this last one. As he backed all the way up, measuring his steps, the announcers wondered how he'd evolve the dunk to get the 49 he needs to beat Wilkins, or if he even needed to. If he could somehow do some sort of spin on the way to the hoop, Rick, I think I would almost ensure it for him coming this far away. All you need to do is make it from the free throw line like you did before, and he'll win. 
but Jordan missed. Thankfully, the rules allow him one replacement dunk, and he used it to do, well, precisely what we've seen from him before, maybe even a bit closer in. So what's it gonna be, judges? This dunk contest is sort of a sideshow to the on-court rivalry these men enjoy as players, in which MJ's team might finally be catching up to his individual superiority. But there's a mini rivalry in this forum, too. Wilkins holds an edge because of his show-stealing performance in 85, but also because of Michael's absence for the Spud Webb show in 86 and Dominique's decision to drop out last season. The last Wilkins dunk maybe got a little shortchanged. The Jordan dunk currently up for judgment has been done before by him and perhaps better, but the judges know full well the reaction that awaits if they deliver a 48 or less. So let's see what they say. Welcome to a moment in history. Fifty. I wonder what the announcers think about that. Dominique Wilkins got the short end of a very impressive dunk. Consistent judging all day until the last two dunks prior to this. This is Chicago. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching. It would mean so much to me if you hit that little subscribe button over there and get updates on new videos. We've got lots of great videos, including other All-Star Saturday stuff like this great dunk contest and this terrible three-point shootout.